Hi there Yarn Jugglers, it's Babs here from My Fiery Phoenix and today I'm welcoming you to the third part in week two of the carousel, cowl or crochet along from Stylecraft designed by Sue Pinner. In this final section for week two we will be combining the original um, centre motif that we created in week one with our newly created circle, um, our joined bands Hello. Um, and we'll be popping the centerpiece into that. This won't be a massively long tutorial, but I just think it needs to be um, thought about separately. So there's some bits and bobs that I need to take you through um, in relation to the stitch counts and where you're going to be joining. Some of the bits that you need to take into consideration or that I needed to take into consideration when I did it and um, and then you can just crack on through using the same double crochet and slip stitch method to join the panels together as you did when you joined the circle together so by now you should be fairly proficient at that um, so as I say this won't be necessarily a very long video I'll just show you how to join one of the sides and um, and then you should be well on your way so grab your hook your yarn and your panels and let's get started Now this time around you should be uh, appreciating um, exactly why we needed to make these bottoms flat, you know, soggy or droopy bottoms here um, to these panels. So what we need to do um, is just make sure that everything aligns. So you can't just drop it in and hope that it's going to work. You need to just turn it around so that your edges match your corners um, with the uh, with the three the three chain here. Um, they go into the angular corner and then you have the flat bottom along the sides so your pairs go along the sides and then the angles are at the corners one of the things that I did myself I checked um, I left out two tails unfortunately I forgot to uh, to tie those in I got a bit carried away towards the end and it was like yes I can finish I can finish I can finish and then I realized that I'd left my tails out so what I'm going to do is actually put those tails together with this tail from the the original first piece so that I only have to tie in on one side I don't have to remember for the rest the rest I can just merrily crochet through without worrying about tying any loose ends in so those are the ends I'm going to start with so I've just put those together so that I can um, hopefully be mindful of them as I start the process and um, one other thing that I wanted to mention was the counts. You have 18 gaps, 18 naturally occurring spaces between the stitches. So that's, if I find the hook, that's the gaps here between the stitches. You also have 18 naturally occurring gaps on the bottom row in between the stitches. So that would be in here. Um, which means that if you are careful, everything will match up without having to make too much effort um, you just need to make sure that you're starting with your corners in the corner um, there's a useful guide in the um, in the little small mini hole um, as to whether you're near the center um, so if you find that you've you sort of stretch things and got out of alignment and your your hole is, is sort of off to one side you know that you need to rip out and start again but uh, you should find that it actually works through very, very nicely because all the numbers match up, all the counts work. Um, so I shall grab my yarn and I will show you what I mean. Now again, doing this on your lap will probably be significantly easier than doing this on um, sort of hovering midair to try and keep it on camera. But what we're going to do is find your chain three space, pop the hook through. As always, I'm starting with a slip knot and then I'm actually going to go into the yellow that I used um, to join everything take that out of the way and then I'm just doing a single slip stitch just to hook everything together or at least I'm attempting to but everything's very heavy and it's all pulled my knot there we go so then pull that tight and that then gives me something secure to start working against. Don't let it twist and flip like this has just done. So it's now just twisted inside out. So if I start hooking along here, um, I'm going to be putting this inside out and twisted. So you need to make sure 
that everything is right side out. So you're working wrong sides together. So you want to have the, the, the stitching, the banding that's joining it on the outside because that is a decorative feature. Don't hide that away inside. So now that everything is the right way round, as you can see, the, the sides match up quite nicely without too much effort. So we're just going to go through the same process that we did before, which if I take that tail out of the way, is a double, which then catches the tails, followed by a single. And then we just repeat that process all the way along through all the chain spaces. So we do a double, my rabbit seems to be very noisy today, and then we're going to capture those tails and we close the chain space and then we go through to the the next stitch for a single slip pull it tight as we work and then come back to the next stitch this is so much easier than the last random selection that we did because we're working in actual chain spaces so this feels much more controlled so those of you that struggled with the um, the stitch placement on the last round should find this so so much easier and then we have another double and then we go to the back as i say i apologize it's bouncing around it's very difficult to do mid-air and then a slip stitch i shall now trim away these last little loose ends being very careful not to cut anything else. I think it'd be devastating if you cut through um, either the centre panel or the uh, the bands at this stage. And um, and now if you hold the work, you should be able to see, if I make sure that's nice and large, that hole, that we are still in alignment with our centre. So everything is, is moving as it should do. We haven't suddenly gone wonky somewhere. And this is again the reason that I explained in the first um, video that you need this to... Uh, be fairly loose because if you have it overly tight this process will not work you you won't be able to to match the panels up together neatly I'll just continue through speeding up a bit now for you And the reason I'm keeping going is because I want to show you what I do when I get to this centre piece. Because I actually take a stitch through the gold when I get to the centre. So we're now, here we go, we're now in the middle. So we hook a double. And then we take a single through through that original gold just so that we're keeping everything nice and neat and together and then we just work our way along to the end and we're now red to red so please don't just double crochet in every red that you do um, you know just be mindful of which stitch is the front and which stitch is from the back In the run up to the end, I always make sure that I take a slip stitch from either side of the join and also in the join itself, which makes use of this lovely big gap that we have here. So we end up with two, or I end up with two stitches in the large gap, but I think that's one, hopefully what the gap was designed for, um, and two, it gives us a much more secure corner join. Uh, so we'll just do another trip, uh, double and we've done one to one side so we're now going to join one through the gold and slip it through, thank you Sophie, and uh, a second through that. Large three chain space. I'm going to ignore that tail for the minute. And then we do a single slip 
through that side. So we now have two stitches in the center, in the uh, in the corner, and we've now captured either side of that uh, of that join. So whilst that could be quite large and clumpy, we've now tamed it, tidied it and pulled it down. And then you can just continue on as you did for the other side uh, all the way along. So what I'll do is I will continue on. Uh, and when I come back to this final edge piece here, I will show you the, um, the only part of um, weaving in that we have to do for this particular process. All the other ends will get captured as we move out from the centre, but obviously this is this is our final piece of work at the centre, so any loose ends we need to tidy up. So I'll show you how I do that. Now that we have um, sewn in all the edges, and trust me, there will probably be a panicky moment where you look across at your work and it doesn't look like any of your sides match up, but that's one of the reasons that I placed everything out flat before we began, so that the, um, you know, the horror of having seven sides on an octagon doesn't actually hit you part way through, although I found that it did feel that way at one point, although I knew, um, I knew logically that I had all the right number of sides. Uh, so that's just a, a quick word of warning for you there. And now we're on to the last stitch. And what I do just to make sure that all the, um, all the golds tie in is I just do an additional slip stitch into this upright join. Um, so that we've got gold on gold on gold, not gold on red. So we've got a nice solid three-way colour there. And then I tie off, so I slip through one last time, snip the yarn and pull through. And now, if everything has worked out, I should be able to turn the work and there will only be this tail that needs tying in. So if we turn that over, if I've done everything else correctly, and thank goodness I have, nothing like recording it live when you do that reveal, um, there are no other, uh, no other tails to be sewn in. So this is where you will need a yarn needle, if I can get that in focus, a yarn needle. Um, a tapestry needle will do at a pinch if you must, but really you want um, a, a needle with the largest eye that you can find, just because this, uh, is a nice chunky fat wool. Um, so we're working double knit and it's some lovely squishy yarn. So we don't want to try and squeeze that, crush it through a tiny neat little needle. Uh, so I'll just sew this through. So I'll just take that through to the back. And so sewing it in is literally just that. You take the, the needle and you sew through the, uh, the, the yellow stitches or the stitches that match your color. Take that folded fabric out. And then I come back on myself and I switch sides, weaving over the top of the yarn that I put in first time around, just for, for added security. Because I get paranoid about this sort of thing. Um, and I have small children who are going to be rolling around with this, uh, this blanket at some point. And then once that is done, I just trim away that loose end. And we are done. Here is the completed panel. And um, hopefully you are going to be feeling the, the warm glow of satisfaction that I have um, for completing this. And um, I'm so chuffed with it. I'm really, really pleased. And I love the, um, the texture that you get with the gold. Well worth the, uh, the aggravation if you struggled with the, the uneven stitches um, or, or the, uh, the fluid stitches. Um, but uh, I think it's well worth all the effort. I think it's beautiful, a beautiful piece. So uh, hopefully I'll see you in two weeks time for the third part of the Carousel Cow. Until then, bye for now.